roads. Last video was very interesting. He's going into the words like I've been talking about for quite a while. Going into the words and finding out what they mean to us energetically. Because before we get into looking into words, you have to basically unspell yourself from the actual energetic power of the words first. And that's another kind of breaking of the mind. I remember when it happened, like I, it happened to me, it was an actual, another, that happened along with the ego death thing. That was, that was it, like the, the mind actually is composed of the words. And so when you break free from that energetic attachment to those words, those symbols, it's not that you lose the ability to understand what word, words mean, it's that you see that the word itself is not the thing itself. There's, <laughs> there's an infinite regress, step back, step back, step back, step back from the thought process that energetically attaches the soul or the spirit into the word because the word is not the thing that it's trying to represent. It wishes to represent, it wishes to, like Roald says, outline or inline, to scribe, to lineate, to picture what the thing is. Okay, the word attempts to do that, but the word cannot do that. It can only hint. It's like uh, Osho said, uh, I can only point to the moon. You have to get there yourself. All of my descriptions or descriptions are just a finger pointing to the moon. You have to see it with your own eyeballs. And it's very deep, it's very subtle. The spell casting that has been done on us from birth is incredibly uh, rooted in, in the psyche. It's got tentacles and tendrils and strings and attachments, emotional attachments, in, in uh, the whole subconscious that we're not aware of here at the conscious level, but it very much affects our day-to-day -day thought process, which affects our day-to-day -day actions. And it's interesting as well what Roald was talking about with how society has kind of removed the antithesis to scribing or picturing and they've made, they've added the same meaning onto both op polar duality opposites of the words. So now all of the words mean scribing. Which is kind of ridiculous because you need to be able to see the counterpart to understand the one half of the duality. So somehow describing has come to mean picturing or lineating or representation or modeling. Somehow describe, which like Roald said, should mean removing the picturing. Somehow to our minds that has come to mean the same thing as scribing. You see what I'm saying? And to delineate which should mean, like he said, taking off the picturing, taking off the modeling, removing the structuring around the thing we're trying to pict or scribe, now it means the same thing. So delineate now to our mind, wrongly means picturing in, modeling in, when it should mean removing the lineation, delineate. So that's just another example of how powerful and how malleable the scripting, the spelling system is. It can do whatever anybody wants it to do. Any word can have multiple meanings, and those meanings can be changed, and those meanings can be directly programmed by yourself as well. You can deprogram just the word description. If it meant picturing in to you, and up until now, you can deprogram yourself or reprogram yourself or simply program yourself to have that word description instead of meaning picturing or, or lining or lineating or modeling, which is wrong. It's not the original intention or meaning of that word. 
you can reprogram, you can program yourself to have that word description or delineate mean removal of the modeling. Removal of the modeling away from you. That's your option as well. So just going into the word structures and what they mean to you, it will change your whole thought structure which will then change your whole way of life because the spell casting is what drives your day-to-day -day activities. Not completely, but it has a large role. So it's very important to know what it is that you're saying when you're, th when you're thinking to yourself, when you're speaking to yourself. It's important to know what's happening there, what's going on there. And that's why as well meditation is very important or simply stillness, or quantum resting as Roald calls it, it's very important because it gives us space. It gives a space between us and the programming that we've grown up with that has been added on to our being throughout our childhood from age zero all the way up into however, however old you are now. So meditation gives you a pause from the internal train track, clickety-clack, clickety-clack, click-click-click, that never wants to stop. The mind just wants to yap, blah, 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 forever, all, of, all the way into eternity. It doesn't want to ever stop, okay? And meditation is allowing mind to take a pause, to take a breath, to actually look with a clear mind at what is going on in your life instead of just taking everything as it comes because it just comes and comes and comes and it's not ever going to stop unless you give yourself allowance to take a break. You can do that anytime. Like uh, Tobias, you know, he has his one full conscious breath thing. Like, just one. Recenter yourself. You can do that at any time to, during the day. Why not? The rat race wheel nonsense thing is always going to be there for you. <laughs> I mean, it's not like that's going anywhere. Why not give yourself some space during the day or during the moment, anytime? Look around, see what, see what's going on with the weather. Like, go check out nature. The more often that you do this, that you develop the practice of keeping your attention more possibilities that open up for your day, for how you can spend your time, for who you allow yourself to be around. And the more you do that, the more conscious, sorry, the more consciously things will flow through your life. It doesn't even mean that all of a sudden you're grabbing the reins and you're just dictating everything. You're just lineating, you're scribing every, you're scribing your life. It doesn't mean that that has to happen necessarily, but it means that things happen more consciously. Things happen with awareness. Things happen properly. Instead of the opposite of that, which is the unconscious, which is just try and fulfill desires as they pop up. And that's it. That's certainly one way to live, but it's not a it's not a great way and it's a good learning tool to, to do that for a while because that will help lineate, that will help uh, embody or form, format your conscious space. It provides contrast. Contrast is good. Space is good. Stillness is good. Expansiveness. Awareness. All these things. This, these, 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 these are your natural state. This compressed, compacted, contracted state is unnatural to us. We're relearning how to be expansive. We're remembering. We're remembering the body. Putting the body back together after it... Elon said, remembering the body. Be 
Robin.